Kenny Gunderman made a video, the end of the self-taught programmer. So I have some unfortunate news for everyone. The days of learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript and landing a 100K a year job within six months are sadly over. Doing those boot camps for six months, you will not land a 100K job anymore. But to be honest, I'm not sure they ever existed in the first place. They definitely did exist in the first place. I specifically opened up layoffs.fyi. Why are we talking about layoffs, right? What I want to show you guys is in the COVID 2020, 2021, 2022 boom, there was a mass hiring of these engineers because as Ken Kenny's saying, days never existed. They did. People would be able to learn programming in six months and get a job at these big companies. And then we had the whole layoff chart happen. And I've talked about the layoffs like so many times. I don't want to go over it right now. But obviously there was this boom where you didn't have to be exceptionally skilled to gain a job that pays you incredibly, incredibly well. However, the point is uh, landing a job as a self-taught programmer is becoming exceedingly more difficult than it has ever been in mm -hmm. the past. Matter of fact, when I got my first programming job back in 2016, I didn't have much experience, mm -hmm. but somehow, some way, I still managed to land a part-time coding job with relatively no effort. Now, granted, I did land this job through a string of connections I made, which kind of just goes to show how powerful networking can be. Yeah, power of networking is the biggest power you have. People ask, oh, what's the best way to get hired? The best way to get hired is if you know someone can give you a referral. Obviously, you can do cold applying. Does that mean your chances are going to be zero? Absolutely not. But still, if I were trying to get a job in this market with the amount of experience I had back in 2016, I would probably have a better chance at winning the lottery because <laughs> the reality is the market is just terrible right now. So if people with degrees and with experience working at big tech companies are struggling, you can only imagine how hard it is for those people who were told by influencers like me that it's possible to get a job in programming without a college degree. I love that. The fact that he just said that, I think should highlight a few things. This dude's real. I'm an influencer and I said this shit, no longer is it true. And if you look, I specifically called out a few developers that kind of claim otherwise, right? Pooja Dutt is one of the most recent ones where she says, you know, you can get a job just by making a portfolio here and there and you can, you know, you don't need a CS degree, et cetera, et cetera. But Kenny's being like, yeah, you know, influencers like me, because look at this platform, 219,000 subscribers. He's saying, hey, that's no longer really the case. A lot of people were trying to just like, hey, learn React and get a job, but pay us like $800 for my shitty course. Like, and so web dev was, and still is the most saturated avenue in engineering. Um, but what we've seen lately and what I've seen lately is people, and I'm talking specifically about these, I don't want to call them scammers, but these boot camps and these content creators be like, okay, web dev is saturated. I'm not making as much money. What could I do? Well, how about I teach them Python? What these people are labeling Python as the back end language, because front end is saturated. Let me be clever. Let me teach Teach, let me teach backend with Python. Because Python's not JavaScript. I know Python. I can teach this. I can also tell you can get land a job as a backend developer using my course in six to 10 months. That is kind of the new trend, the new scam train that's can't come into our little space, our little avenue. Let's take a look at the average entry level developer job posting. So this Again. is for a full stack entry level. Okay, first of all, full stack doesn't exist. Full stack is a scam. Don't apply to full stack roles. And these qualifications are generated from Google because they're stripped directly from the original job posting. Now, right off the bat, the first thing you may notice about this entry level posting is that they want two years of experience. You can look like you have two years of experience, yep. even if you spent those two years learning. Yep. This is agreed. something that we'll go over agreed. in a minute. Other than that, you will see that you need experience with JavaScript, React, Redux, HTML, CSS, REST APIs, authentication mechanisms, knowing how to optimize React projects, continuous integration. Okay, so I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. If I look at this job posting, this this is a very junior level position. The stacks here are, are in my opinion, very junior. Expertise in JavaScript, inclusive DOM manipulation and JavaScript object model. That's just a fancy way to basically say you write JavaScript for a web uh, for, for the DOM. Prior knowledge of React, obviously you're gonna be using React, such as Flux or Redux. So these are like state management tools. Redux, it's kind of a mess. It's kind of old, whatever. Familiarity with HTML, CSS, and RESTful APIs. I, I truly don't even think these are skilled. If you're using React, you don't explicitly write HTML, CSS, you slap Tailwind there, you're good. Or just, you know, copy and paste CSS files. Uh, RESTful APIs, like, come on. Like, that's just Axios. You know, Axios, that shit. A Jotai is good. Jotai is good. A familiar with contemporary authorization mechanisms such as JSON Web Token. A JOT is like the most simplistic way to authenticate. Knowledge of continuous integration delivery techniques, they're not going to actually ask you to 
do all this. Experience with agile scrum development methodology. What the fuck does that even mean? Strong written and verbal communication skills. Are you an asshole or not? Computer science management information systems or related degree. They just had to have another bullet point. So when I look at this, this is like a junior, junior position. They're basically asking, can you use React? And how do you gain experience into building real world software as a self-taught developer with no job experience? Well, you do that by building real world full stack applications, which you can use to create a beefed up resume. Okay. Let's say this is the type of job I'm going for. The one okay. that lists out all of these qualifications. The very first step is to come up with a project idea. This project idea absolutely does not have to be unique. Okay, Agreed. so pick a hobby like reading. You can build Agreed. a very robust CRUD app around the idea of book reviewing, book rating, sharing books with friends, so on and so forth. Matter of fact, this idea already exists. It's a platform known as Goodreads. You can take Goodreads, build it from the ground up with a slightly uh, tweaked feature set, and then rebrand it as your own. So for this example, let's say we have our project idea, building a Goodreads type of application. Mm -hmm. Let's go through how we can gain experience in the other qualifications it's listed out here. in this posting. So first off, we'll build our front end using React, TypeScript, and the Redux library. So we can check off these bullet points here. And by using React, we'll naturally gain experience into HTML with JSX, which is similar Redux, enough. And then we'll also gain experience into CSS. We can gain JavaScript experience by deploying an API of some sorts using an AWS service, let's say, such as AWS Lambda. And because we'll need some sort of database for our that's API pretty, to fetch gnarly. and save data records. We'll create a database, maybe something like MongoDB, and again, host it with Amazon. Wait, we can implement Mongo? some login page in Yucky. the app that uses the type of JSON authentication that this job posting mentions. And as for Agile and Scrum, we can spend a few hours doing some research in how companies follow Scrum practices, and then follow those practices while creating our portfolio project. I think everyone knows like you should not be using Redux. You'd be surprised how many big fan companies, big established companies use Redux, whether that's a behavior of just the first implementation where Redux was king and the fact that rewriting Redux at these companies is going to be not worth the effort. I don't think Redux is worth it. I think there's much better store handling options like Jote, Zustan. I, I recommend, I couldn't, I can't recommend Zustan enough. I think Zustan is, in my opinion, one of the best tools that replaces Redux. Finally, we can use something like GitHub Actions to automatically deploy our release builds, giving us some high-level exposure to how CI a CD works. So in theory, we could build and deploy this application using the practices I've just mentioned and extend that over a six to 12 month time frame of coding, deploying, and if you worked on a full stack application of this sorts, not only would you gain the type of experience that real companies value, you would have killer points to mention on your resume. You would have yeah, projects up, that not even the average computer science student has on their resume. I think it's a good video. I think I want to summarize a few things. I would say I agree with 80% of this video. The thing I want to caution is Kenny is very optimistic, even though this is a very like pessimistic kind of approach. I think the 20% I disagree with is that all you got to do is make a project that incorporates the incorporates these requirements and you're good to go. I don't agree with that. If it was that simple and which it was, I think, you know, that's why we saw such an influx in, in development. And I'm going to just switch over it. My, my honest opinion, I wouldn't just build something using those tools. I would build something a little more sophisticated, right? Like, you know, obviously you have to use React for the JS framework, something not Redux, not Redux for state handling. A DB, you can use whatever. You can use whatever. I personally use relational DB, so not Mongo. Not don't use Mongo. I, I don't think using Mongo give, teaches you good practices, especially as a beginner. It's kind of a, just a fucking mess. Postgres is almost always the correct choice. 100%. Postgres is the correct choice. Mongo is like, it doesn't teach you how to properly think about your database schemas. That is my kind of opinion there. Of course, like you have to have some knowledge of how you want to use your keys and there's going to be some consequence, but Mongo alleviates a lot of that for you. And those pains only come as your app matures.